Okay, so we've just used some edge loops. So we've cut some edge loops, we've moved and scaled them around, and we've got a little bit of detail going on with our barrel now. Now, obviously, it's quite low polygon looking. It's quite angular. It's not smooth. Uh, so a really common way of working in 3D is to build things in low polygon and then add what we call a subdivision surface over the top of this model. And what a subdivision surface does is it, it doubles all the, the points that we've got already, all the segments in this model, um, or we can triple or even quadruple or more. We can add a whole bunch more detail into this and smooth out all these sort of hard, low polygon looking edges. So this is a pretty common way of modeling stuff. Now it's pretty easy to do. What I'm going to do now that I've finished my polygon modeling with this barrel, I'm going to go back into model mode. So once you've finished, always go back into model mode, which means we're just dealing with objects as a whole now. And what I want to do is I want to create a subdivision surface to put my barrel into. First thing I'm going to do is name my barrel because we should always name stuff. And what I can do is go to my create menu and under the generators tab, uh, I've got a subdivision surface. Once I've created that, all I need to do is drag and drop my barrel into the subdivision surface, and we should see now we get a much smoother looking barrel object. Now I might just turn off my lines for a second just so I can see it without the lines. So that's definitely starting to look a little more like a barrel. So what the subdivision surface done is, it's, it's literally done that. It's subdivided all of the segments. It's added more of them in, which means we get a smoother curvature to our barrel. Now with our subdivision surface, we can select it <clears throat> and have a look at its settings. You'll notice that there's two main settings for this, subdivision editor and subdivision renderer. What this means is that in our, in our editor view, in our viewport while we work, this is called the editor view, it's being subdivided twice. Now we can turn that to once or even zero. And when it's set at zero, we can see the original mesh. That's the original mesh detail that we're working on. Subdividing it once means that each of these polygons is divided in half, both horizontally and vertically, once. If we subdivide it a second time, we um, <clears throat> get uh, another layer of subdivision. And the renderer, this is telling us how many times will it subdivide it when we actually render the, um, the, the model that we're working on? The reason we have two different settings is because for some uh, models, we might want to have a really smooth surface with maybe even up to four or maybe more subdivisions. Uh, I wouldn't go much above that because you'll start to really slow your computer down. But it can be a little slow working on models this size in the viewport. So what we can do is just turn that right down and when it renders, it'll subdivide it this many times. So that's the subdivision surface, and uh, I'm going to leave mine on two and three for now. Now, looking at my barrel, it's definitely looking slightly barrelish. I put a bunch of detail in the top of my barrel. I'm just going to turn off the subdivision for a second to have a look at it. So I've got a lot of extra edge loops in here <clears throat> just to make some more detailing. I didn't put any at the bottom. And look what happens when we turn our subdivision on. We've got this really smooth, rounded base to our barrel, but we've got quite a bit of detail on the top. Now, this doesn't look quite right. I want this to be fairly um, similar at the bottom to the top, but what we can see here is when we don't have very many edges close to each other, when we turn on a subdivision surface, <clears throat> we get large, smooth curvature and smoothing. What I actually want to do is make this corner a lot sharper. And the way that we can do that is pretty simple. We can just add some more detail around the corner, this bottom edge of this barrel. Now, the great thing about subdivision surface is that we can leave it turned on and smooth, but we can keep modeling with the original barrel while that subdivision is turned on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my subdivision is turned on. I've got my barrel selected. I'm now going to go back into polygon mode for this barrel. And I'm going to right click and choose my um, loop path cut tool. And once I do that, I can see a, a sort of a faint wireframe version of my original model um, sitting over the top of the subdivided model. And what I want to do is I want to cut a couple of extra loops 
around the bottom edge of this barrel, one just up the side, and you can see as soon as I do that, my subdivision surface updates, and it's now not a lot sharper around the bottom of that barrel, and I'm just going to put a little subdivision in the, uh, in the base of it as well, near the edge, and I actually want my barrel, the bottom of my barrel, to, to go outwards slightly. If I look at the model here, I can see there's a little bit of a lip that goes outwards at the bottom of the barrel. So one way I could start doing that is to grab my scale tool. I'm going to go to edges and double click this outer edge here. And I can just scale that out in my X and Z axes. And I get a little bit of a splaying out of the base. Now, if I want that to be sort of a harder lip, what I can do is position these two edge loops closer together. Because the closer together edge loops are, the tighter or the sharper the, um, the angle or the creases between them. So what I'm going to do is grab my Move tool, double click the edge that's just above the base, and if I pull that down, as I get closer, I can see I'm actually pushing my barrel kind of inside out. It's going out through the bottom, which I don't really want. But what I could do maybe here is add another edge loop or two and just put a bit more detail in there. So I'm going to right click, grab my loop cut tool again, and I'm going to put another edge loop in the base, and another edge loop just really carefully around the, um, actually I'll separate these a bit so it's a bit easier to see them. And I'll just grab my move tool again, Double click that, shift it up a little bit. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to just scale and position these loops a little bit. Scale that one in a little bit. And maybe what I might do with this one is just lift it up slightly so I've got a little bit of an indentation under the barrel. And I might scale that loop inwards a little bit. And maybe this lip here. That one can go in as well. And maybe I'll just move this one down a little bit further again, just carefully. Okay, and if I move back, I can see that's not quite as big as I wanted it to. So let's grab this lip again. Actually, I'll grab both of those. And I'll just scale both of these outwards again. So now I've got a little bit more detail just by making edge loops and just carefully positioning and scaling them with the subdivision turned on so I can see what my smooth barrel will look like. So this is a really great tool. We can work on our low polygon barrel while we're viewing it as a subdivided surface. So this is a really great way to work. Um, it's much easier to model and to sculpt objects when you're dealing with less polygons. Um, but with a subdivision surface turned on, we can see what it's going to look like once it's smoothed. The other thing I can see, looking at my barrel, I've got these raised parts around my barrel here. They're a little bit, um, they're not quite sort of sharp and pointy enough. And if I look at my barrel picture, there's actually an indentation either side of the ridge. So maybe what I could do here is add some extra edge loops again. and grab my scale tool and I might even just scale these ones smaller and if I, if I select both of these shift double click and scale them together and maybe scale them a little bit taller maybe this one's a little bit too big and I'll grab these two and scale these down closer together and I can start to just work on that detailing and get it a little bit more accurate to how the barrel actually looks. So again, this is just dealing with moving and scaling edge loops. And just modeling by using just um, combinations of selections and my scales and moving tools. Okay, that needs a little bit of work still, but I'm starting to get closer to this kind of a look. 